Si vais terminando, por favor. Please, could the photographers uh, finish taking photos, if they'd be so kind? Please. First of all, I want to reiterate, we're very, our excuse, uh, we're very sorry for the delay in the commencement of uh, this Prince Conference. And as you well know, it corresponds to the film, the Danish film, Silent Heart, Still Hjerte, which has just been projected in its official premiere in the official section of uh, the San Sebastian International Film Festival. To present the film, we have the presence here of the director, Billy August, and also the cast of actors and actresses who are here with us today, Danica Kursik, Gita Norby, Morten Grunwald, and Paprika Steen. Excuse me for my, I'm sure, incorrect pronunciation of all of those words, th those names. Okay, well, as I see that you're all eager to ask questions, let's commence the press conference and the questions. Hi, good afternoon. I would like to ask uh, Billy August, Pelle the, Con the Conqueror, 25 years ago, the critics, after winning the Palme d'Or with the film, named him as the heir of Ingberg Bergman. And he directed The Best Intentions, which is a script of yours. Um, I'm not too sure whether this new film is a return to that universe of the beginning of your cinema, because those two films I recall very much. A lot of critics and the audience believed they were a much more intimate to Bill August, August. I don't know whether you believe you're returning back to that intimate origins as a director. You know, I'm always moving forward, so I can't say I'm uh, going backwards here, but uh, this kind of story uh, about relationship interests me a lot. And um, it's interesting about this story, uh, euthanasia is a theme that has been discussed a lot in Denmark in the last couple of years. And when I got this script written by um, uh, Christian here, Christian Torp, I really, really liked it because it you could, in that story, you could see from the inside how affected the family is uh, by this decision the head of the, uh, the family has, uh, has done by uh, ending her life after the weekend is over. And um, I thought it, it was a very, very powerful and beautiful story. And to me, it's really a story about uh, dignity. Next question, please. Hi, my question for the two sisters, the, the co-actresses. Uh, how did you prepare for the role? Because you're very convincing and they're very complicated scenes related to the mental uh, d disorder that one of them has. What did you do to get so involved into, uh, into conveying the characters that you had to convey as sisters there? How did you work that out between you? <laughs> I said something completely different. No, I didn't. <laughs> I like pizza. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> world, world peace. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's start. I start. start. This is our first film festival. <coughs> so I am being the older sister and starting out. You start, yeah. I think uh, Danica and I are working very, uh, I don't know how Danica is working her methods uh, with research and stuff. Um, I'm sure she has her way, uh, which is very convincing, and I'm, I believe that uh, if it's convincing and it's true and it's real, um, it doesn't really matter how you get to it. Uh, from my point, I never do any research. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm working with my... Uh, unless I had to you know, work a fire thing or something, or be a doctor and do stuff, I, I don't really do any research. I, I tend to use my intuition a lot, and this part is also... Um, I'm an older sister and I'm playing an older sister, so I, I knew a couple of things before that. Uh, I was, from my point, uh, 
which is all, always the, also the way we worked, is that when the character gets you within the first week of shooting, uh, that's where all my questions comes to get, come together. Um, I felt that the mother and the daughter, my mother and the sister here, um, had a very cold relationship and it was more and more painful as long as we shot the movie. And so I just tend to um, be in the moment and uh, feel the pain while it comes along. And the first couple of days, uh, I was very intimidated by the whole situation as an actress, but I could easily transfer it into my character being very uncomfortable with the situation. Um, so that's how I research for this part. For Danica. me, it was also very, um, like the, the whole situation is so, it's such a human story and, uh, and uh, it was very easy to, uh, to get, um, yeah, to, to both feel the emotions and we had a really amazing connection as well. And um, so it was, it was, yeah. A lot of it also, uh, sometimes when castings work together very well, it all happens in the makeup room in the mornings, in the cold mornings in Denmark at five o'clock when it's dark and we know we, only, we can only see the light for maybe half an hour that day. And Gita is coming from Copenhagen because she played a big part every evening and came and shot in the day. And we, had, we all had colds, you know, we always have colds in Denmark. And so we, it, we sort of got into like a family thing. Oh, a, lot, a lot of that stuff also comes from just being there and being in the now. Uh, Hi, good afternoon. Congra congratulations for the film and the reception of the film. I think this can only be lived in Cannes. What we lived this afternoon, the applause after the film, which was quite impressive, by the way. I would like to ask you, uh, it seemed uh, very theatre-like. Everything is so perfectly rehearsed. I imagine there's a lot of theatre sort of carpentry there. It could be a, a, could it be a play as well, apart from a film? And the second question, how do you deal with the right to decide with this sensitivity? I think it's quite admirable, by the way, on your behalf. The organisation and the consensus, can it only be understood from a Nordic standpoint or a Nordic perspe perspective? Because we, maybe we can't understand it down here in the South, that decision of, of wanting to, 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 to die. Uh, as I said in the beginning, is something that is really being debated a lot in Denmark at the moment. And um, personally, I, I, I have not made a decision yet. Uh, I think it's, um, it's up to the, we can ask questions, and that's what we are doing with this film. And specialists and um, politicians should make that decision. Uh, if you experience this as becoming or, or being a, somehow theatrical, I think it has to do with the fact that it all takes place in one location. And actually, I'm sure Christian, the writer, one day will turn into a, a theater play. Mm, yeah. All good movies are turned into theater plays. <laughs> Yes, hi. I would like to know whether do you, any prior investigation of the characters and the relationship between them, what I mean by a prior investigation, whether the story seems that the mother's decision has already been made and that they've already understood it and they've taken it on board. This family beforehand, did they have any debates or any discussions which were quite in-depth because everybody had assimilated the fact that she was going to... Uh, 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 die. Um, how did you deal with the lighting as well? The scene, for example, of the dance around the Christmas tree, or all this, the mist upon the on the lake outside, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, we were trying to use as much uh, natural light as possible because we thought that would fit the, the story. Um, about the preparation, you know, we. At least I had to make a kind of a story about each of the characters and what had happened before this weekend. And when everybody arrives there, they have all their... It's very awkward for everybody to be at this uh, place at this particular moment. And everybody's trying to be prepared as much as, as they can. And of course, then it turns out to be completely different because uh, as Heidi, uh, is, she is very strong and 
and committed in the beginning, but then she changed uh, into all her vulnerability inside her all of a sudden burst out. And I think that's the beauty of the script and the story that, that each character develops into almost the opposite of what they are in the beginning. Next question, please. Hi, good afternoon. Just simply, I wanted to thank all of you for this marvelous film in which I felt completely identified with because a few years back I had to go through that same situation because a passive euthanasia was carried out on my father and I, I, moved, I was very moved and I cried very much. So therefore I want to thank you very much for the film. Next question, please. Yes, I would like to know, what was the most difficult scene to shoot and why was that so? All of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All. No, it felt like, uh, you know, because of the scene that, that we were heading, um, it, it was like one big countdown. And it was like we were heading towards the end of the story where um, Esther is going to die, and which was also the last scene. And I think that day when we shot that scene, that everybody was very touched by. It was a very special moment. And it, for me, it at least was the most um, difficult uh, scene to, emotionally to, to do. We only shot it twice. <laughs> That's also interesting for an actress as me. I've done a lot of movies. I've never tried before to work with somebody as Billy, because he never... You never take scenes more than three times. <laughs> so I think he's the very, very good uh, director. When you do that, you're not only manipulative, and I know that Bergman was that too, and actors went home and thought they made the whole thing up, and then they looked in his book, and it was all there in the book. So that was uh, pretty amazing to, that Billy really knew where he was going, and, and at the same time gave us so much space. Mm -hmm. So we never felt, you know, um, cramped in in some kind of staging or anything. Very nice. We, we became a, f um, a film family mm. very quick mm. because we were so tight together in Denmark is in, in this, this little place and suddenly uh, we have a feeling for each other that comes just quite naturally. Mm. Of course we, kn we know each other because we are actors and we know uh, the different and the, we know the, the, us, but but suddenly we um, we went to Fyn to Kerteminde to this little house, little tiny. and um, suddenly something happened between us, and uh, maybe that's a touching thing, that something is going on between people and between us in in the, the shooting time. It was a rare and a very touching time to be together without any so big problems or asking why and how. And no, we, we felt a form of family together. Um, yes, it, it went very calm and very um, quiet and uh, with <coughs> big love from all of us to all of us. Hola, buenas tardes. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Congratulations for the film. I would like to ask you all whether before the film you had an opinion about euthanasia beforehand and whether the film has changed your point of view after shooting the film and doing the film as, as regards to your point of view on euthanasia. Cool. I mean, uh, it's a question. I can't answer it. And I am not Esther. I'm just Gita Nørby. And uh, I haven't the strength and the thinking and the belief that uh, this person, Esther, has. So uh, it's a part of thinking and being and acting and telling a story about people and uh, marriage and friendship and daughters and uh, yeah family but uh, for me it's a great question I can't answer it of course I can't I haven't the strength what was the question uh, about dying uh, okay. you uh, the question was euthanasia 
to decide to 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 have a. I do uh, understand that. Oh my god, it's not suicide. No, the. The question was assisted suicide, whether, you, whether before shooting the film and after shooting your, your film, your point of view changed. I, I uh, understand the couple who decide this. I mean, he is a professional uh, doctor of arts, and uh, he knows what an awful illness she got, and she don't want to see her in a respirator, or what is it called? Respirator. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's a very dramatic love story. That's right, Morten, it's because a, it's, about, it, it's, it's, love about, it's about from... love. And that's the point. It's about love between uh, the, two, uh, the, the two parents, the father and the mother, and the, the, the suddenly when the mother said, well, it is a bless that I know that my husband can be together with one of my best friends. I mean, I don't know who of us who can say these words, but this is a story. And um, there, for me, I think it's very touching to, to uh, love in that point, in, in that strange and that human being to love each other like that. And I don't and think it's a sad, it's not a sad film. It's a light and strong and with lots of lights and hum humanity and uh, love between people. Mm -hmm. But also when you ask that so specific, if it's a Pandora's box, the minute you go into that question about if to do it or to not, um, <laughs> now I sound like a Danish prince, um, uh, the minute you do that, you start living the character. The minute the question pops up, all the questions you normally wouldn't have asked yourself because you've not been in that situation, suddenly you can say, yes, I believe it, that that would be a good idea, and then suddenly you feel something and, no, I don't believe it. That's what I think art is. is. It's questions. It's open questions, and it's up to you to I mirror answer, yourself. I can't answer that question, but, uh, I mean, I take it from the script from the text, the story, and I, I, I understand it, and uh, therefore it's a, a gift to give that story as an actor. Very good story, very moving. I don't know what I would do myself if I was in that situation, but I'm sure I would find out something, but I can't say I would do exactly the same thing. Yes, next question, please. Hi, good afternoon. My question is for the whole, all of you, globally, perhaps in a country in Spain which has a very deep-rooted Catholic tradition in the DNA of our society in Spain, we lack that none of the characters talks about God or the, the idea of transcendence. Death is conceived as the end of pain but not as the beginning of something better. That idea of transcendence, of it being transcendental, it, um, it surprises me that it doesn't appear in any of the characters. Could you make any remark as regards to what I've just said? If I can start, very short, they're all doctors. <laughs> they're all scientists. And I'm not saying that's the answer, but that's what I thought when I read it, that it is interesting. That, but there are scientists, or it's called scientists, and what do you call that in English? Uh, you work with science. God is very rare, very present in doctors' lives in a s strange way. And it's rational. And Danish people are very rational. And that's my answer for my, I don't know about the others. The only thing we knew for sure is that we don't know anything <laughs> what happened when it's over and having a belief it's a great gift and uh, yeah what is it no the belief i mean to believe yes, in believe. something after <laughs> but uh, the doubt is always there and, but I'm very curious. 
look forward to see what happens. But the thing is also that they see their mother all of a sudden walking, talking. They don't see the illness. And I think that's also the, the complexity of the story. You, you see your mother is, you know... We see it. We, we see Very somehow a healthy but mother. But we don't show and that's, it. Yeah. And that's what makes us... Uh, act irrational and very human, maybe also selfish, you can say, but... Mm -hmm. I find that much bigger than trying to, you know, pretend that there's something after life. You don't know. We don't know. Then there's been a complete other movie. Mm. Different movie. Next question, please. Hi, my question is for the director. The placement of the camera, is that premeditated or, or is intuitive? For example, in the dinners, at the table, for example, it's almost subjective in its placement. Did you think of that beforehand or was it intuitive as you, started, as you were shooting the film? Was that thought of beforehand? Um, we always follow the action. We follow the emotion and the camera is where, where the camera needs to be. So it's very simple. <laughs> and you work with two cameras? Yeah, also, yes. Any further questions? I would like to ask Bill August, after two Palm d'Or in Cannes that you received a few years back now, What's your relationship with the awards and prizes and festivals? Because do you, continue, do you think it's a useful stage for disseminating your films? Are there a good to promote your films? What do you think about what do you think about the what do you think awards and prizes have to do and festivals in the promotion of your films? Do you think they're still valid? I think, that first of all, the biggest award for me is if you have a great script, if you have a, a great couple of wonderful actors like these one, and if you have the best crew and the, you know, the good story, and if you can create a situation where magic happens and you know that the camera's there to watch it, mm. that's for me the biggest reward. You know, that's really when I feel everything comes together. Prices, film prices is something that can happen and, and of course it, it's great if it happens but it's not the most important thing. To be in a festival like this is wonderful because it gives a lot of exposure to, to the film and it's also on a personal level for me it's wonderful to again to see all these wonderful people I've been working with finally to see them again. Uh, but we, I mean, an Oscar or a Palme d'Or, of course it helps a lot in the financing of a film, but again, the biggest reward is really creating life on screen. And the audience tonight. Yeah, the audience tonight. <laughs> Amazing. That was nice. That was very beautiful. Alguna pregunta más? Any further questions? I don't know if you're aware, but um, the German have made a film about ALS and the right to die as well. It's called Hin und Weg. Um, it's interesting that we talk a lot about ALS and uh, we talk a, a lot about the right to die in dignity. Um, I know it's close to a question that was asked before. Have you personally changed or has the film had an impact on the way you think about this issue? about the way that you talk to people around you about this issue? It is a very, very complex uh, question whether we should, in Denmark it's not, it's forbidden, uh, uh, assisted suicide. And it's a big, big uh, question. I've been in discussion now with a lot of experts and they say at, that within five or ten years it will be legal. That's where we are heading because of dignity again. But, but I know, for instance, in Switzerland, where it is legal, it's very, very few who practice this. It's not like 
if it becomes legal that it will always burst you know, into a lot of people. <laughs> it is, I think in Switzerland, it's about 10 people per year who really needs it and who is allowed to do it. I can give you a bit of a... In Switzerland, it's organized a little differently. I think if you want to compare two countries that do it in, the, in a perfect legal framework, Belgium and uh, the Netherlands are yeah. the, the places to look at. Switzerland is a bit... It's a little grim, even though there are workarounds. Okay. De acuerdo. Thank you very, very much. Um, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.